What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, y'all know who it is. You know what it is. It's your boy Big June. I'm back with it. Here with another episode of Big June Sports Talk, man. With sports discussion because sports debates and so on and so on, man. But we discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly. Everything and anything in the sports world I touch on this platform, man. I want to apologize if you do hear the noise in the background, but you know, my neighbors are getting their roof done. And you know, the AC in the background in the car as well. It is hotter than Sunshine State of Florida. So bear with me. And again, I apologize for the for the noise and the inconvenience. You know, I just dropped a couple of episodes. You know, Sandman, Mariana Rivera. What the fuck is wrong with John Morant? No pun intended. I just dropped uh, Broken Warrior, Andrew Wiggins. Thank you for all the love and support. All the, uh, hit that like button. Continue to notify notifications. Keep subscribing. Thank you for everything. And, you know, it's that time of the year. As far as basketball, everything starts coming to an end, right? Once you know the NCAA tournament is amongst us, the NBA season is really coming to an end, right? I know a lot of people across America enjoy this time of the year. March Madness, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully your team is still involved and that program is going strong and representing right now at the Sweet 16, sets it off, kicks it off tomorrow. So you're down to the 16 teams. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna get into that. But just like real fast is my college basketball history experience, right? I'm a Yukon, Connecticut Husky fan, always have been, always will be, since the days of Khalid Alami, Rip Hamilton, Ray Allen, Tate George, you know what I mean? But don't tell nobody. Jim Calhoun, Kevin Ali. So I'm rooting for the boys and I got a good interest on this team and this matchup against uh Arkansas, again, you know, Arkansas won two national championships, right? With uh, Nolan Richardson, I'm correct, with uh, Corlin Williamson and, and, you know, a couple of the Razorbacks, and it is what it is. Those are some of the historical teams that are still alive in the Swiss 16, along with UCLA, Tennessee. You know, but enough about me riffing and ramping about my favorite teams and experience as far as the Connecticut Huskies go. Let's get into some of these matchups, right? Tennessee, the fourth seed Tennessee versus the ninth seed Florida Atlantic. Tennessee's the favorite by 5.5, right? If you want to go with the point spread and all that, right? So let's slow it down real second. Florida Atlantic, got to consider them a Cinderella team, right? When you think of all the teams and the conferences, it's Conference USA, Versus the SEC. Now, everyone knows who where the SEC stands for as far as football and basketball. But to have a, C, a Conference USA team, excuse me, in the Swiss 16 right now, out of all the teams that represent that conference, it's Florida Atlantic. So, if you ever like rooting for the underdog, if you want to see Cinderella capture her man at the end, you got to root for a team like Florida Atlantic then, right? Just think about it. Because it gets no more Cinderella than that. And there's a couple of other teams that are still alive. And we'll get into that. I continue to go through the matchups. Now, this one right here, it really caught my eye. Knowing I know these two programs, I have the little history of, of them, right? So you have number three, Kansas State, versus number seven, Michigan State. Michigan State is favored by 2.5 at the moment, right? So Kansas State... Know a little bit of Frank Martin was the head coach, Beasley, a couple other come, come, excuse me, a couple other guys coming into the league. As far as Michigan State, Tom Izzo, and what he's meant to that program. So I'm sure your boy Draymond Green will be watching this matchup real close and shit, right? So it is what it is. Number seven, Michigan State versus number three, Kansas State. Now. Uh -huh. Here's a matchup that I'm going to be interested in. Number four, Connecticut versus number eight, Arkansas. So like I just mentioned, fan of Connecticut since the days of Jim Calhoun, Kylie Alameen, Rip Hamilton, Ray Allen, etc., etc. So you know what university I'm rooting for. But I do know the history of Arkansas and some of them national championships that they won when I was a young boy, a fan of the basketball. You know, it is what it is. So now... You have UCLA, one of the most prolific historical teams in NCAA history, right? Versus one of 
want to say one of the latest powerhouses, even though they come from a weaker conference, in Gonzaga. So it's number two, UCLA, versus number three, Gonzaga. With UCLA favored by 2.5, right? So is that a heavyweight bout? I mean, Gonzaga's consistently, constantly in the top 25 of all the time. And when you look at it for the last, what, 10, 15 years? However, they haven't gotten it done yet as far as reaching a national championship and winning a national championship. Or should I say, winning a national championship, right? So that's an interesting matchup as far as just looking at it from a school perspective from both programs, right? UCLA, all the history, the rich tradition they have over there versus Gonzaga. With, you know, that stigma of always having something to prove, that David versus Goliath, right? So would this be the year that Gonzaga actually wins the national championship? I mean, stay tuned. We're all going to find out, right? Now, this matchup right here is one of the number one seeds still remaining in the tournament. And that's Alabama, favored by seven and a half versus San Diego State, the number five seed. So when you look at another Cinderella team, you have to mention San Diego State. They got to be in the equation, right? When's the last time San Diego State made noise in any sport that I can remember? You know, prove me wrong. I'm always here for that. But when I think of the San Diego States, I think of uh, Marshall Falk. Co correct me if I'm wrong, and that's not the college that he played for, right? Yeah, I might be exposing my age a little bit, but it is what it is, right? However, they're in the Sweet 16 with a puncher's chance. So is the number one seed guaranteed to move on to the Elite Eight? Is this a trap game for Alabama? Are they looking past San Diego State as the number five seed? I mean, you never know when it comes to sports. And one of the beauties and one of the perks and one of the things that I enjoy, your boy Big June, of college basketball and college football, this whole college almost experiment, with baseball's a little different with the exception of baseball, right? It's a one and done. One team, one go home. Win and go home. That's it. That's the beauty of it. So the, it makes, it intensifies everything. The matter, it, it matters more. Each play matters. Each possession matters. So that's one of the beauties that I enjoy about college, the experiences, basketball and football, right? Now this here, this matchup, this is for all my underdogs. You know what I'm saying? You got number 15, Princeton, set to take on number six, Creighton. Creighton is favored by nine and a half. Now I know you know Creighton has been ranked a couple of times, but when you look at the overall landscape of both programs, the history, of both programs. They fit under that shoe of being Cinderella teams. So you're looking at that matchup and you wish that both of them could advance. Cause your boy Big June, I love to root for the underdog. So I would love to see one of these Cinderella teams in the national championship, maybe facing off against each other. So you know a Cinderella team is guaranteed to win and to make headlines and to be in the spotlight and publicity for some of these smaller programs, right? Now, the other number one remaining seed is the Houston, University of Houston, who has set to face the number five seed, Miami Hurricanes. Houston's currently favored by seven and a half. Now, when I mention these spreads, they could go up, they could go down, prior to the games that go on tomorrow. But as of right now, these are what I'm seeing as far as Vegas, the numbers they running out, right? So like I just mentioned, it's the number one seed, Houston, versus the number five seed, University of Miami. Currently favored at 7.5, it's Houston. So, like I just mentioned, does the number one seed move on to the Elite Eight? Is this a trap game for Houston? Knowing it's one and done. Knowing that you're the number one seed, two already went down. It's only you and Alabama. So, you know, are they looking past this opponent and clearly have eyes on the Elite Eight? Remember, you still got to play the game. So I'm not saying that this is, this is their mentality coming into the game, but their focus should be razor sharp, right? As the number one team, knowing what's at stake. But, you know, your boy Big June always going to root for the underdog, so I'll throw it in the air. Is this a trap game for Houston? You know what I mean? And to finish it off, it's another juicy matchup. You have the 2-3. You have the University of Texas, the number two seed, versus the University of Xavier, the number three seed. 
Texas is currently favored by four and a half. So, you know, Texas, the number two seed, Xavier, the number three seed. It's going to be a good matchup. I gave you the rundown on the Sweet 16, some of these matchups, right? Maybe your favorite team is still alive. My favorite team in college basketball is still alive. So let's go Connecticut. And shout out to the women getting it done as well. And all the universities out there currently in the tournament as well for all the ladies, right? Shout out to them. And you can check out Gino Juggernaut that I dropped on Anchor App slash Spotify on my Smokers Lounge slash Big June Days. And, you know, I might have to revisit that. So it is what it is. But again, as I gave you the rundown of some of these matchups, Tennessee versus Florida Atlantic. I'm going to give you my prediction. And, you know, some might say it's delusional and I'm going to constantly root for the underdog, but I'm going for Florida Atlantic. Not because I'm a resident of Florida because you see the New York hat. It is what it is. But I always like to see David slay the Goliath. It is what it is. Who doesn't like to see a Cinderella story? Who doesn't like to see the big guy lose at the end? The top dog, bow down, bow out. By the little guy. Kansas State versus Michigan State. You know, you, someone consider that heavyweights. And Tom Izzo. What he brings to the table. What he brings into the equation in this matchup. As the head coach of Michigan State. He's been there for years. His resume speaks for itself. So again, you know, it is what it is. Connecticut, Arkansas is self-explanatory. Let's go Huskies. UCLA, Gonzaga. Is this the year Gonzaga gets it done? and certifies themselves in the college world. In the college world, basketball rankings as one of the greatest teams, possibly, one of the mid-majors to do it, to get it done. Stay tuned, we're all gonna find out, right? Alabama, San Diego State. As much as I wanna see a number one seed or a matchup of number one seeds in the national championship, if it goes that way, I'm always gonna root for the underdog. Let's go San Diego State, Marshall Falk. <laughs> Right? Princeton, Creighton, I mean, come on, man. Why couldn't it be a tie and a draw? Why couldn't both teams automatically advance for reaching the Sweet 16, right? I'm rooting for the underdog, man. It is what it is. Call me a hater, man. Houston, Miami. Hey. Real bias on this situation, on this matchup, because, you know, I really have no interest as far as who wins and moves on. But I'm going to go with Miami. Because I am currently living in Florida, so it is what it is. And finish it off, Texas Xavier. 2-3, thinking about Texas. Some of the players that came out, you know, uh, Kevin Durant, TJ Ford, Xavier David West. Yeah, again, I'm exposing my age, but it is what it is. I'm going to go with the underdog, man. It's Xavier. It's a Underdog Wednesday. Your boy, Big June. Here on Big June Sports Talk. is always going to root for the underdog, man. So if you're looking at it from a better perspective. A better perspective. There's no way to, better way than to take the underdog. That's giving you two chances of winning. Because if they cover the spread and still lose, you win. But if they win the game, the spread doesn't matter. You automatically win. So again, the underdog. It's underdog Wednesday leading up to Thursday for the Sweet 16 matchups. It's your boy Big June. This is what I'm giving you. Right? Now, a couple of the questions that, you know, popped in my mind as I'm doing my research and I'm looking at the matchups of some of these teams, right? Which program can elevate their game to take it to the next level and capture a, natu a national championship, excuse me? Would it be one of these historical teams like UCLA, Connecticut, Arkansas, rising back to the top? Or would it be one of these mid-major Cinderella teams like Florida Atlantic, Creighton, Princeton, San Diego State? I mean, it gets you excited as a fan knowing that one of these small major teams, one of these smaller programs has a chance to make history. And I'm enjoying that fact, knowing that it's one and done. You don't get a chance to make it up. It is what it is, whether they were the better team that night on the court. It is what it is. You have to respect it. So again, you got to get excited knowing that one of these small programs could make some noise and make history. I mean, it is what it is, man. So like I mentioned earlier, with the possibility, because I don't see how East, West, South yet, when it all breaks down, once you get to the Elite Eight and the Final Four, right? Could it be a possible matchup of number one seeds in the National Championship or in a Final Four matchup between Houston and Alabama if they both advance in tomorrow's matchup? So, for the people that 
love to see the favorites compete and show why they were favorites for a reason and the number one seeds for a reason. I get it. I understand that. So that would be a juicy matchup. But me, your boy Big June, if I had it my way, it would be for the national championship. That means both teams, number one seeds, ran through their conferences, ran through the bracket, ran through the tournament, and here they are, ready to claim the number one team. So, breaking it all down, look at the landscape of the Sweet 16. Who are you rooting for? What program has your interest? Who has your rooting interest? As far as like, you know what? I'm not a college basketball fan. However, I do root for this team. That's your boy Big June. I root for Connecticut. But again, if Connecticut gets knocked off, you already know I'm rolling with one of these underdogs. So again, if it's not Connecticut, your boy B. June is rooting for one of these center render teams, one of these smaller programs to make history. And, and you know, in that matchup versus Princeton and Creighton, you know, it's great for college basketball to show you how far it's gone to get into an equal playing level and some of these smaller programs competing with some of these big heavyweights late in the Sweet 16 and moving forward. Because some one of these, or possible some of these Cinderella teams are going to reach the Elite Eight. So eventually, history is going to be made. History is going to get come kicking down the door. It's a beautiful time to be a college basketball fan. Just think about that for one second real fast. With the possibility of Florida Atlantic, Gonzaga, even though, you know, they've been making noise for years, but they still haven't reached that pinnacle as far as that national championship level. Championship, right? San Diego State, Princeton, Creighton. Fuck it, I might even, excuse me, excuse my language, YouTube, my bad. I might even throw in Xavier. Possibly winning a national championship. I couldn't contain my excitement for a second there, right? So again, Xavier, Creighton, Princeton, San Diego State, Florida Atlantic, or Gonzaga capturing a national championship in tournament time. This is why they call it March Madness, right? It really is. Just think about that. A lot of these heavyweights were knocked out early. Your boy Big June, he was excited about that. I was happy. You know, North Carolina, the Dukes. Go, go, go. Some of these other teams, you know what I mean? They're constantly making noise. Kansas, could they didn't get to defend their crown. Oh, well, it is what it is. But guess what? It's the consolation prize for Kansas. Kansas State is still alive. And in the Swiss 16, it is what it is, man. Listen, some of these matchups, some of these point spreads, up and down. When you look at the overall program, and if you've been following them, you know they have a punter's chance. You know they could possibly reach their lead eight and more. Final four. National championship game. So, is your favorite college basketball team still alive? Fortunately for your boy Big June, his is. So, again, I'm rooting for Connecticut, but I'm rooting for every Cinderella team. I'm rooting for every small program to advance to the lead eight to reach the final four and to grab catch a national championship. I mean, when I when I decided to do this NCAA basketball tournament episode, because, you know, I really ain't been running it like that as far as these episodes go. I was hoping that what I gave you is what we were getting. I'm an underdog guy, man. It is what it is. I'm rooting for the smaller teams. I'm rooting for the smaller programs. I'm rooting for David to defeat Goliath. And that's where it was going to be. So, again, shout out to Florida Atlantic. Shout out to Princeton, Creighton, San Diego State, Gonzaga. It is what it is. Xavier, all these small markets, all these small programs on the map. It's a beautiful time to be a college basketball fan. And they don't say, and they don't call it March Madness for a reason. So again, could you imagine if one of these smaller programs captures a national championship? Listen, we might be seeing history in the making definitely exciting time man and again i want to say thank you for the love and support he keep hitting that like button he keep hitting that subscribe button tell a friend tell another friend we can discuss it debate it however you want to go about it on this panel man we discuss the good the bad and the ugly everything and anything in the sports world i touch on this platform man be on the lookout for this boxing episode i got and thank you for the love on the andrew wiggins broken warrior episode 
Again, all my family and friends in New York, stay safe, stay sharp, stay blessed, stay alert, stay on point. All my family and friends in the pen, some of y'all got released, some of y'all about to get to y'all David's son, some of y'all about to see the board. It is what it is, man. Hold your head. I'm out of here, man. One.